Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Game of Thrones, Windows Coming. Today we are taking a look at Siege of Winterfell, and since it's about to end soon, I'm going to talk about what you can do to actually get better at Siege of Winterfell, like a small guide, and some things that work and some things that don't work. First of all, you have to know that Siege of Winterfell is on a separate map. You'll be placed on either end, depending on which alliance that you are in and of course in which color your alliance has and you'll basically one alliance will be placed in the north and one will be placed in the south and from there on out you can basically capture these points around the map and they will give various benefits or give some points or buffs or other things and I'll go through that like several, like how the map looks like and so on uh, later on in this video to kind of give you an idea how big and how difficult it can be to navigate and what to be um, aware of. Of course, like most other events, uh, you also get rewards for participating and it's not a matter of if you're winning or losing, it's a matter of how many points you can get in the match and based on the amount of points you get, you get certain rewards and these rewards are basically cumul cumulative. So they basically like get added on top of each other. So for 20k points you get 16 honor banners and 800 valor points. At 30k you will get the 20k reward plus the main material selection chest and valor points and so on and so on. So usually people that actually or alliances that get at 80k usually try to pull away from the map so that others, the other alliance that comes in can also get some points and that way people are usually like very sportsmanlike in terms of how to actually uh, navigate the map and giving away points and so that everyone can get some things uh, out of it. And yeah, uh, once you enter the map you'll be asked to create armies that you can basically move around and there are like certain ways and buttons and so on that you can use to actually um, navigate or help like communicate with your alliance members and so on. But I'll show all of that when I show the map and show what you can do before entering. So we're going to take a look at some of the more theoretical aspects that you should know about the uh, City of Wonderful now. We're going to take a look at the more theoretical aspects of Siege of Winterfell. Basically, this video is going to cover a little bit about uh, which buffs can be, can be used and which can't be used. It's also going to cover some of the more interesting tips and tricks, something like that. And it's also going to cover some of the good to know information uh, at the end of the video. First of, all, we're going to, first of all, we're going to take a look at the buffs in Siege of Winterfell. Uh, Warriors Inspiration and Protection should be able to work inside Siege of Winterfell. Uh, you can only use one of them at a time though, so you have to choose between if you want to have 20% extra attack or 20% extra defense. Hall of Faces uh, should also work inside the event as well. Um, make sure that you can actually get the execution off and get the buff before entering the event, because once you are inside the event then the buff won't apply. The, the buffs are basically locked before entering, um, so make sure that you have all your buffs and stuff correctly applied before entering the match. Favor buffs also apply inside the event, that's just a general standard thing, uh, Favor gives like slightly bonus attack, bonus defense, bonus total health and it's generally like a decent buff to have if you don't mind to go into Favor and then just jump, jump directly into the match. It will stay the entire match as well, so keep that in mind. Um, badges and equipment are of course applied to the march where your main lord is inside, so badges and equipment is also applied to, to, to the game mode and of course this also means that you should make sure that you can actually use your, or that you're using your main lord in one of the marches. Uh, Warrior Summon doesn't work, which means that you can't increase your army size. You can't increase your army size with the, the item um, in the Seventh Blessing. Um, so it also says on the item that it doesn't work in Siege of Winterfell. So keep that in mind. Um, that way you avoid also running into two million troop armies from enemies. So that's always a, a nice thing. Uh, dragons are not allowed inside, so dragon skills do not work inside either. Um, with dragon skills here, I mean of course uh, blue, yellow, red uh, dragon skills that you can get um, in the fragment shop and stuff like that. So uh, certain active dragon skills such as dragon bite and debuffs or buffs to you should be actually working inside Siege of Winterfell as long as you have the buffs or debuffs before entering. 
so keep that in mind as well. And then of course one of the more important things also is that some commanders are actually not in Siege of Winterfell. So make sure that the main commander that you're using is actually one of the commanders that are allowed inside the Siege of Winterfell mode. And to see a list of that you can just click on the Siege of Winterfell button inside the game. And then there should be a button that basically shows available commanders and you can look at it inside there. Now we're going to take a look at some of the tips and tricks that are inside the game mode. Um, Cavalry is the fastest unit, uh, while infantry and bowmen are slightly slower than calves, and spearmen are slower than infantry and bowmen. This of course means that you can outrun spears with calves, and uh, you just have to play the map correctly. If spears are marching towards your calf army, you can just pull away and kite them around the entire time. And since calves are the fastest ones as well, they are better at sneaking behind enemy lines and trying to capture uh, a point that's uh, not guarded and it also allows you to kind of uh, run away faster from the point if you're um, getting attacked so definitely worth uh, keeping in mind that you can play the map with calves much better than you can with spears but of course once you're holding a point so on spears can be super valuable in holding that point because it forces the calves to come into you so it's all a matter of using the units uh, in a tactical fashion to your benefit uh, there are various buttons to help give commands on com commands on the map, and we also mentioned that before before entering um, the theoretical, theoretical aspects, and I will also show it on the map right after. That you can basically do certain things uh, if you're not in a call that kind of give an indicator for alliance members to what they should do in certain areas or certain points. Before the match starts, you can also save your army sets so you won't have to waste time with it during the match. Basically, there's like this 30 minute window where you can prepare your armies and so on, and inside the, the map, you can basically pre save your army so you won't have to spend uh, 10 15 seconds trying to set up your army and trying to find the commanders again and so on. Uh, it can be done with like basically one click, then, and the army will be immediately out of your castle that way. So, it's a really useful uh, tool to use if you want to save a little bit of time. And of course, the last important thing is that you can't enter the safe zone. Uh, so if you want to regroup as an alliance, if you're getting pushed back uh, inside the safe zone, then you can regroup inside there and you can force your way out and try and find a way to get through the enemy fronts, if you can say like that. At the same time, this also applies for you uh, when you're attacking the enemy, that you can't get inside their safe zone, so you'll basically have to uh, play around the fact that they might come out in a big group and force you back. So it's not something that's usually happening that often, but it does help happen in the cases where the alliances are at a pretty big disadvantage um, fighting against you or you're fighting against an alliance um, that's much stronger than you. But this is kind of like some of the few points and now we're going to take a look at how the map looks like and what can be done and why it's important. Okay, we are now inside the event, and as you can see up here, the battle will begin in 24 minutes, so we have some time to basically set things up before you actually have the entire fight happening. And we can go through some things that are good to know, or you should know, when setting up your account before battling. Uh, first of all, you can see out here that there are alliance markers, and these things basically pop up, you can see here, you can basically decide if you want to attack a spot, defend a spot, support a spot, whatever is required. It's one way for you to actually communicate with your alliance members if they are not in call. Then there's the entire lock mouse thing, which is um, not something I've tried, I don't recommend to try it either. Uh, I'm not sure what it does, to be honest. And then there's uh, enable simplified mode, which is something I would recommend to those that have a low-end PC, because all of the skills and stuff that are happening, names and so on, can really clot up the screen and make it start lagging, so it's something you should keep in mind if you're having uh, trouble uh, running the, the mode sm somewhat smoothly. And then there's of course the Winterfell resource thing uh, that indicates when the next package will be dropped at uh, Winterfell, so that's one way to kind of like keep track of it and yeah, so it's like kind of a fast rundown on how it looks like um, in terms of uh, micromanagement inside the, um, the game mode. You can also see that 
plants are placed at the north and the south and supposedly you're not able to get past the barrier here so you have a protective area in case you are going to be slaughtered by some kind of alliance or bigger alliance than you so that way you can kind of uh, manage your defenses and try and make a plan and maybe make a push like a group to push to get out of the wall and recapture some of the points there are of course several points on the field the outposts give uh, points based on how long you hold it and then of course they give less points than the bases do which also just give points and there are four bases and four outposts too for on each side and same with bases then there's an armory to one side which gives a uh, 50% total attack, total health and total defense to whoever holds it and then there's hot springs to the other side which gives a 100% healing speed um, so basically those are like key strategic points you want to have uh, sometimes you don't have to hold the hot springs the entire time you might be able to push it for a short uh, amount of time where you hold it then you can heal it up and then you can basically drop it they of course both of them also give points but of course if you're looking for points the bases are the most important ones and then the outposts are even like decent but they are closer to you so they are harder to recapture for the enemy and then of course at Winterfell the chest or the resource pack will drop which will give I believe it's 4k points with the first one the second will give 5 5k points and the third one will give 6k and it will keep increasing by 1k points for each uh, chest that's being dropped assuming that the chest gets delivered in um, if it doesn't get in delivered in then the one chest that is basically on the field will stay spawned until it gets delivered in and once it gets delivered in it will take I believe five minutes or something like that five or three minutes for it to uh, respawn a new chest so it's definitely something to keep in mind also because you are running on this specific field around and to capture points it takes time for your troops to move around cavalry is faster than uh, infantry and bowmen who have the same speed between each other and then spearmen are the slowest so if you're going for something that's going to go far you might want to send out the cav to take it but of course keeping your troops together is much better as when you focus on one single troop with all three troops you have or armies that you have then you basically deal bonus damage so use that fact as well focus down on enemies that have low amounts of troops so they get, don't get the bonus damage against you and try to weed out based on the weakest players and try to weed, out, weed them out of course if there's one strong player inside it might actually be beneficial if you have enough people to just gang up 20 people on him and just delete that strong player as fast as possible and then make the others vanish faster if you don't have someone that can basically tank him for a longer period of time so there's definitely some kind of um, strategic element to it and you can also see that there are cliffs and stuff uh, mountains and so that block the, w block the way that you're walking so you have to basically position yourself and walk uh, in certain directions in certain ways so you have to count on that things take a certain amount of time so actually come if you get beaten back then you have to go out back to the battlefield again and go to the troops um, when you're making a troop army preset and so on you can basically set it to auto for example and then say okay I want this there that way it will save that in the number one spot the entire time and you won't have any issues with uh, getting your troops out faster or getting your troops um, like prepared already before the match so it's something I would highly recommend you to do and yeah so of course keep in mind that healing also costs or takes longer in here so the hot springs is definitely valuable to get and yeah uh, play the map as good as you can try to get the chests if you can at Winterfell sometimes delaying the chests from an enemy to get um, turned in while taking 30 points on the field can actually give you a victory so play the map uh, in however way you want and make sure that you have one person directly that kind of gives directions and tells you what to do and how to do or a few people so that you don't get lost and don't just argue inside the call but we're going to go back to the theoretical section right now and see what we can add to that we are now going to go through the last bit of information a bit fast in case you miss it during the map talk but anyways here it is uh, the first chest that drops from the Teacher of Winterfell, or Winterfell rather, is 4k points and chests that come after will have 5k points, so 1000 points uh, more than the 
third chest will have 6k points or another top point and it will be like that the entire game. It doesn't matter how long it takes to actually drop in the first chest, the second chest will always only have 1k points more than the first chest and so on and so on. So the time for it to take in uh, doesn't matter at all. Uh, as mentioned before, Hot Springs gives 100% healing speed, while Armory gives 50% total attack, health and defense. So if you're going for battle stats, go for Armory. If you need to heal, go for the Hot Springs. I would highly recommend you to not heal uh, unless you have the Hot Springs, because it really increases the healing speed by a lot. So make sure you do that at least uh, when you can. Focusing attack on one enemy army uh, gives you a damage boost, while you getting focused down by other, like several other enemy armies will give... Uh, make you take uh, extra damage so play around that fact well uh, focus down the smaller armies first and do not go alone so that way you can kind of avoid uh, getting uh, hit by several groups at the same time and you might a be able to kind of like turn the fight around lastly and which is also the most important part uh, city of wonderful is a team event so that means that you have to use communication and teamwork to actually win the event one guy can solo carry the entire alliance, you have to play together as an alliance and because of that it's important that you find one or a few that can actually lead the City of Winterfell and give out commands and help directing the alliance and that way improve how you can actually manage the event and how you can actually get the most out of the event. So these were like this was kind of like a short guide or a general like basic guide on how to improve on City of Winterfell. I hope you liked the video, uh, like and comment if you want to, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and of course if you want to play the game the link is down in the description below and so is it for the discord group and the music and yeah that's going to be all for me this time around guys um, take care, have fun, good luck with the events of course and yeah bye bye